Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show, Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at another integral part of a computer, the computer case. So you have to understand what and why it is in the first place. Now it makes computer transportable. Somebody has to manufacture the component. Somebody has to sell it to you, the final end user. For that reason, a computer case plays a very crucial role. Apple could not just send you motherboards, cannot just send you C CD drive, GPU and things like that. They have to package it in such a way that it becomes transportable. That is very crucial aspect. And to make it standardized, it makes uh, every other component compatible with each other, especially needed if you have multiple manufacturers making component for a single system. Now it is what we call complete processing. Basically, this is why CPU is generally referred to as a you know computer case. Basically, whenever you see something like this, people call it this is the CPU, you know, the process, uh, processing unit. Because not only it contains CPU, it also contains GPU, either uh, Nvidia or uh, Radeon series. The reason for that is all the computation done in the computer is done inside this box. So everything you have outside it generally is not for computation. They are generally either input or output system like audio amplifiers or display. So all the processing generally it is tried to make sure in a scenario there they can ensure that all the processing is done inside this unit. So even if it fails, you can just replace it and your input and output will remain the same. For this reason, this is a complete package deal. Now, you also have to come to thermal management. Now, many of you have seen in recent days the rise of open bench air system. Basically, that's solely built for testers. You're not gonna buy an open bench system for your home simply because it's very dangerous. Not for the safety of you, but safety of the component. Because if you touch any component and you have static charged, it will not ground properly. And simply, you might just hit on something. They generally use low voltage DC components. So it's very unlikely that it's gonna kill you. And the components that can kill you, that is the power supply, it is generally encased in its own self with proper groundings, if it's a good power supply. So inherently, there is no danger to you, but from you to your component. For that reason, we like to encase it all. And it also provides a proper thermal path. Basically, air goes in, hot air comes out. It's a very clear-cut path. So this is what and why we use it. Now, we have to understand the whole reason why computer industry progressed so much is simply because Bill Gates one unique decision that he could market DOS to anyone after he sold it to IBM. The license would have been kept open as in he could make money out of it. Now, this opened the floodgate to every manufacturer who wanted to build something. They can build it and Microsoft will provide the software. Since uh, IBM was developing on the software, basically building the application, building the business and the things, consumer can also benefit from that infrastructure. So then comes the problem, if it's not standardized, how can you make sure your components like MSI or uh, MicroStar International that is MSI, <laughs> MicroStar International or Gigabyte or Asus or any of the, these manufacturers can make components that will work with each other because all of them can only make one component. Some may make graphics card, some may make motherboard. To make sure there is a standard to this, the casing standard was decided. Now, this standard many of you are familiar with, ATX. Now, this is a standard that is established by Intel, the processor manufacturer, and everybody agreed to it. That's why this ATX standard, as, as of now, as I speak to you, is the most popular standard for computers. Most of us have micro ATX. Now, mini ATX is also catching on since uh, most people don't need that many PCI Express, and this nowadays can have almost everything, including uh, PCI Express uh, 3.0, PCI Express uh, SATA, uh, PCI Express based uh, NVMe SSDs. So for all that intents and purposes, these two are very common. And if ATX standard would not have been created, we could not have reached a scenario where mass production of computer part by different different manufacturers would have been possible. Because Intel locked it down and industry as a whole agreed to it, now we have computer industry. So standards are two types of standards. One, you have internal standards like component level standard like this, motherboard. Motherboard being the biggest component, it was the uh, first thing that to standardize. Everything else was standardized around it. That's why you can see PCI Express came after uh, old PCI Express, uh, PCI. Before that, there was AGI also. So for this reason, motherboard was the first thing to be standardized, to lock down. Like this is it. We're not going to tamper with motherboard. Then everything else fall into place. 
now whenever you buy a cabinet in your shop or anything like that especially on websites they do especially cooler master corsair they do pay close attention to what they are mentioning in their system basically if they say this cabinet can support micro atx do not think even though it may look big do not think you can put standard atx now standard atx are generally workstation grid motherboard where they have a lot of pci express or lot of ram slots or sometimes flat out dual processor system so for that reason please pay attention to that either it's micro atx or standard atx they are not intercompatible and all the mounting holes were also standardized so that's why you can mount a mini into this like all this is this way compatible you can't go this way but you can come this way then we come to the external standard this was done because of the rise of internet once internet became popular once people realized that they're gonna put a lot of system in one place to make sure they serve thousands and millions of people they come up with the standard that we call rack units now rack unit as you can see this uh, representation there are two width of rack, uh, 19 inch and 24 inch. Basically, whatever uh, you buy the server, they will tell you what you want. You want full width, uh, basically 19 inch or 24. Each have their own benefit. And in that unit, that's just the width. How, how about the height? Height was determined by you, one you being one slot. So generally, you can buy one U unit, which is generally used for uh, routers or uh, firewall computers. Then you can buy 2U, which could be something more powerful, either more powerful firewall, antivirus, or network attached storage. And then you have 4U, which is full-fledged computer, generally used for supercomputing and things of that nature. There's another uh, variant of this, which we call blade computers, but that they are not as standardized as this. That's why I'm not talking about here. So if you want to, if you are in a scenario where you're like, hey, I'm gonna build network attached storage system, I would advise you may, sh you should look into U system simply because even if you are building one now, you may build one another in the future. And in that scenario, you can easily uh, buy a rack and just put all of them in one place. That will help you simplify the networking system. And you may build your own uh, network switch basically. For that reason, server system is the best. So this is the form factor aspect of it. Now we come to, okay, it's standardized. What, let's talk about the material, how it's made. This is very crucial. Computer cases are the only thing that can outlast the electronics inside it. You, you may replace your power supply, not because it's bad or like, you know, it stopped working, simply because it may not be powerful enough. My old cooler master power supply was 500 watts. I could not think it could have powered my current GTX 10, uh, 1070 graphics card and with a bulldozer processor it's uh, kind of pushing it so i bought i had to bought uh, something more powerful 600 watt or 800 watt. i'm not sure which one i have but as you can see everything could change but your case i have the same case for last uh four and five years that uh, i think i can i'm gonna use it for many many years to come simply because that's the most standardized thing in a computer you can change everything else but your case will remain so for this reason materials play a very crucial role now first you have to understand there is design aspect to it and there is endurance aspect to it. somebody may send you a you know steel case that looks very pretty but somebody may sell you a steel case that is you know coated looks very dull but because it's coated it will not rust it will last longer so there is a balancing act then we come to look and functionality nowadays you can see every manufacturer makes something very very cool looking but you know for a fact that if you buy this is gonna last not because this is bad or anything but this is made out of acry either acrylic or glass both of them can shatter for uh, shatter get cracked or don't have thermal uh, endurance and not to mention they will get scratched over time scratch on this will just look ugly scratch on this will make it uh, so ugly that you have to replace it like scratches on that is tolerable scratches on this is not so for that reason you have to choose whether you want look or functionality now of course if you are building a luxury system if you're like you want to show your system or something like this is the best i, uh, I found out so you have to decide what you want and be mindful the components inside can change but your case will remain case survives everything else dies so for that reason please be mindful before you buy the case now what we expect in the future well future is very custom as i talk to you more and more custom pcs are being built than ever before alienware flat out now have its own uh, weird weird architecture and every manufacturer makes their own uh, weird weird architecture that is not traditionally standard even even though they specify their atx standard as in mini atx or micro atx they are not following the guidelines on the outside as in this is my personal favorite msi night blade 
Now I love this system because this is the size of a UPS but it has a mid-range to high-end gaming performance. And what they did, they had the motherboard, they put a very slim heatsink, capable heatsink but slim heatsink and then they put a PCI riser then put a graphics card somewhere else. Now all of this allows them to make a very extremely small case but this is not standard because uh, all the motherboard is designed in a such a way that you're supposed to plug your PCI Express directly not uh, you know have an extension then hanging it out somewhere else. For that reason, this is a custom system. Even though every component used is a standard company, you can go out and buy it. But because it's using PCI Express, it will be classified as a custom system. But benefit of that is the most compact price to performance ratio PC I have ever seen. This uses server power supply to save money because if they had made a slimmer power supply, they are more expensive and not to mention they are untested compared to server power supply, which has been going on for 30 years. So, and not to mention there are many unique abilities now will be unlocked, especially because the rise of artificial intelligence and neural network pushes hardware to a point where each processor, as you see in this, can reach a point of three to 400 watts of power consumption. Air cooling will simply not do it. In my last episode of uh, computer cooling, I specified oil cooling is becoming more and more important. Now, to make sure that uh, uh, you can cool something that generates that much heat either you have to use water or submerged now submerged has the benefit of you know it keeps everything uh, intact it keeps everything cool not just like whatever you are cooling and it's inherently more simpler rather than having pipes and if pipe fail you're gonna you know spill water into it and fry your system here it cannot happen this is a very interesting approach where they instead of using oil they're using a methanol based solution which is very complicated weird weird things they have mixed in so it boils so this is a two-stage cooling system there's they don't have only water Water, uh, you know only a liquid going around they have liquid that boils off on the hot components then goes to water and there is radiators here that will take the heat off and then dump it back so it's a it's like a heat pipe basically they are putting components inside a heat pipe so in future we're gonna see a lot more submerged computer than we think and I don't think there is any way in future that uh, we're gonna have air cooling server system simply because the heat output of those systems are way too high and not to mention it saves uh, money by saving electricity so so even though messy nature like people saying that you know it will make data center messy yeah people can handle that we have surgery where you can cut home at a human change its heart and put it back together and man will walk again we can handle a bit of oil spill so for, this was my presentation on computer cases i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't okay dislike and uh, i would urge you to leave a comment what would you want to see in the next episode of computer wednesday and i would urge you to subscribe please i need 1000 subscribers and press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching